I, I have been an, mandated by our leader, Chief Awumolo, to speak for the body of senior advocates, and this is my speech. It, it is my privilege, most humbly and respectfully, to speak on behalf of the body of senior advocates of Nigeria at this special court session marking the commencement of the 2023-2024 legal year. Let me start by congratulating those who had the privilege of being recently elevated to this Court of Appeal. Congratulations. Next, I mourn with you the death of Honorable Justice Rafael Chikwe Agbo of this court, whom the Lord called to himself as he prepared to retire from the bench. I mourn with you also the death of Honorable Justice Chima Santos Mweze of the Supreme Court, who has also passed on. May their souls rest in peace. These great sons of the judiciary spend their lives sharing in our sorrows and anxieties. They are gone to take their rest at God's appointed time. May they forgive us if in their lifetime we did not appreciate them enough or we are indifferent to them. May they forgive us if we seemed ungrateful and ridiculed them as we are ridiculing the judiciary now. At the time of violence and uncertainty, the death of these great sons of the judiciary holds lessons for us. If they could die, we should remember that we too shall die. If at death they took nothing with them, we should realize that at death we too shall take nothing with us. If they stand in judgment now, we too should realize that the day is coming when we too shall be called to account. If whatever they owned in their lifetimes are of no account now, let us realize that the things we are sacrificing everything to acquire now shall equally be of no account. When the time comes for us to give account of our stewardship, As a nation, we have been caught in one long, great midnight. Even then, we should not despair. The Lord will save us. The Lord will save an afflicted nation. He will light our candle. The Lord will enlighten our darkness. He will deliver the nation from violence and uncertainty. It shall be with us as it was with ancient Ethiopia. This nation shall, sooner than later, raise her hands to the Lord. It is with that hope it is with that conviction that we live. And so, whatever misgivings we have, we should not resort to desperate battles. 
Those who have taken up arms should please lay them down. Let us forgive one another. We cannot all be of one mind. Let us strive to understand those whose views differ from ours. Unless we do so, we are doomed. As for your lordships, we are all witnesses to the trials and temptations that you have to contend with. We are witnesses to the many difficulties that you have to overcome. We are all witnesses to the dangers that you have to avoid. You work harder than slaves. Even then, there will always be some who do not appreciate you. Our word of encouragement to you is this. You are a match for the evils that you have to contend with. It is the Lord that you serve. He will never burden, burden you more than you can bear. Uh, Pressman, you, you should know that a platform like this is for people like myself who are called upon to speak, to lean on. You, you come and place all these things and I can't lean on anything. We ought to be proud of our judges and justices. And indeed, we are. You are the equals of the judges of other nations. Here and there, mistakes are being made, and that is the proof that you are human. We are in a democracy, and those who wish to criticize you are at liberty to do so. But there is no denying the fact that it is to our judiciary that we owe the continued survival of the nation. And so our judges and justices must not lose confidence in themselves. Nothing that has happened or is happening should cause the judiciary to lose confidence in itself. The vast majority of our judges are intelligent, principled, patriotic, and just. I can say with confidence that in many respects, they surpass, and this is true, in many respects, many of you judges and justices you surpass the judges of other nations. Other nations come here and take our judges and make them chief justices of theirs. Is that not so? We ought to be proud of ours. At a time of gross materialism, many of our judges deserve commendation for the restraint that they have exercised. When the temptations are so great, so persistent, and so rampant, we marvel, not that some judges have fallen, but that the vast majority of them are still standing. In this profession, judges and lawyers must strive to understand one another. Our work is far more difficult than people realize. Unless we are careful, we lose our minds and even our humanity. After becoming habituating or habituated to years of evil, we talk about evil, 
we write about evil, we adjudicate over evil. More often than not, we are helpless to do anything about it. We become indifferent to it. Our minds become brutalized. We become like butchers, indifferent to blood. As lawyers and judges, we must not allow that to happen to us. I was passing through my house some time ago. My little daughter ran after me, and he said, she said, Daddy, I, I, I have something to say to you. I said, go ahead. She said, but promise me that you will not interrupt me until I finish. And I said, go ahead. But as soon as she started, I interrupted her. And she broke down. She started crying. And that gives you some idea how our minds have become brutalized by our work. The work of lawyers and judges means that after a while, they even lose family. Is that not true? We don't have families. Our family is our books. Our beds are an extension of our offices. We go about bearing, sharing in the anxieties of society, and people don't understand this. And that is why I feel very sorry that we are reckless in our condemnation of our judges and justices who sacrifice everything. A moment ago, I sympathized with you, and that is all I can do about the passing onto the other side of Justice Mweze and Justice Agbo. In no time at all, we shall forget them. Those who criticize the judiciary, you are at liberty to do so, but try to understand the difficulties that they have to contend with. I, I, let, let me say a word about what our attitude ought to be to those who are imperiled by being put on trial. Defendants. We brand them criminals. But the law presumes them to be innocent until they are adjudged guilty. Therefore, we ought not to burden them with conditions of bail that are not affordable. When a man is on trial these days, bring a director, bring two directors, bring a house owner, and all that. The principles which govern the grant of bail are the same principles which govern the imposition of fines once a court has decided to impose a fine in lieu of pre imprisonment. The law is that that fine must be affordable it must be within the means of the offender. If you are going to grant bail that the man cannot take, it is an illusion. There's no bail. If you impose a fine that he cannot pay, it is an illusion. And I am happy that the Attorney General is here. Prince Latif Fagwemi, may God bless you. I thank God that an intelligent, courageous, hard-working man like you is our Attorney General at this time. This 
this, this, this court is your home. You understand the judges. And so your appointment signifies for me the beginning of the emancipation of the judiciary. Some time ago, I read the story of a little boy who put a question to his master in the slave days of America. He said to his teacher, my father is a slave. Just as you judges are, you are slaves. And this boy said, my father has done everything required by law to be free. Yet, he remains a slave. What more is he to do? Prince, Prince Fogbemi, our judges have been slaves and they have done everything required by law to be free, yet they remain slaves. So now that you have been appointed attorney general, I, I, I am convinced that between you and the president, you will emancipate our judges. And I want to appeal to senior members of our profession who take it upon themselves to abuse the judiciary. You can't do that. The judiciary is like a murder. And our duty of respect for the judiciary is unqualified. Please. We can criticize the judiciary, but we ought not to abuse it. It is not a perfect institution. It is a human institution. Mistakes are being made. We can correct it not by condemnation, but by encouragement and commendation. But let me say one last thing before I go and sit down. And it is this. It is said that the law is what the judges say it is. The law is what you say it is. Recently, there was an incident in India. Two women were scandalized. They stripped them naked and paraded them through the streets. And the Supreme Court of India promptly said to the government, said, if you do nothing about it, we will do something about it. That's the Supreme Court. The law is what you say it is. So say it. Your courage should not fail you. Your confidence should not fail you. Say it. The judiciary is the one arm of government with the capacity through the work of interpretation to expand its powers. And I dare say, in appropriate cases, to limit the powers of the executive and the legislature. You can't. The law is what you say it is. And it is because you have been saying the right thing that this country continues to survive. I can't say everything. I have only a few minutes. So let me go and sit down. Let me congratulate you. May the Lord bless you. It is the Lord that you serve. St. Paul said, whether you are a servant or a slave, it is the Lord that you serve. And as you serve him, may the Lord bless you. Thank you very much. I, I, I forgive the pressman who won't let, let me lean here. <laughs>